Hello and welcome to Channels Book Club. I'm Olakunle Kasumo and it's great to be back on the show again. It's crunch time for the 2020 Channels Book Club Prize for Literature. Remember last year we had to postpone it because of COVID-19. The whole world was on lockdown. And at a point in time we were wondering, uh, should we cancel it? Should we go ahead with it? Uh, it was all a lot of things, you know, where uh, things were very difficult to decide upon last year due to uh, the obvious uh, challenge of the worldwide pandemic. Now, uh, what we have now are 10 finalists of the competition. The judges eventually submitted the names of 10 brilliant boys and girls. Well, actually, nine brilliant girls and one boy. Boys, I don't know what's happening to you. We've got nine girls and one boy. Now, the 10 will be going head to head during the final round. The final round will take place at the end of this week and the judges will then pick the best three. So here are the 10 finalists. Now, the important news for the 10 finalists and for everybody out there is, unlike before when we will take the winners to some external uh, international book events. Um, in the past, we've gone to Germany, we've gone to London, we've gone to Sharjah. Um, it's been interesting. But unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 situation, we cannot do that this year. Even our hosts, the sponsors, in the US have cancelled. They cancelled last year. They're cancelling this year. And we do not want to expose our young people to the dangers of the pandemic. Um, so this year, unfortunately, the winners will not be traveling overseas. But we've got some other nice prizes for, for them. We've contacted the finalists, the parents, the teachers, and everybody's really excited about uh, pushing this competition to its logical conclusion. Uh, so what are the winners winning this year? The first prize will win one high-end laptop and 150,000 Naira to develop a personal library. We will give the money out and uh, the students or the parents will help you know, them to build a personal library. So one laptop and 150,000 Naira. Then the second prize winner will win one high-end laptop and 100,000 Naira to build a personal library. Then the third prize winner will win one high-end laptop and 50,000 Naira to develop a personal library. The other seven finalists will get 50,000 Naira each. Now, all the 10 finalists will be sponsored to attend a masterclass writing program with a very experienced and successful writer. This is going to be 
fantastic for all the 10 finalists. They will get the opportunity to learn uh, basic skills and writing and even some of their, I mean, their own submissions will also be assessed and they'll be told, you know, what went wrong, what went right. Uh, and it will really be a very productive time for the 10 finalists. So we are looking forward to hosting the 10 finalists later this week. The judges are set for them and the finalists themselves are set. We will announce the three winners on this show on our next episode. So you may want to look out for that. Now, up next is a book titled Unlock the Secret to a Winning Life by Taufik Babayeju. Ah, this is such a lovely book. I mean, even talking from a production perspective, this is hardback. Okay, and there's a paperback um, version of it with, with the white color. But this is hardback. And, you know, uh, a, a few years ago, even months ago, it was preferable to go overseas and produce books because of authors who were particular about quality would rather go and print in India, in Dubai, in China, um, and all the other famous places where people print books overseas. It was always cheaper to print there. But, you know, by the time you add the cost of printing in China or in India, freighting it here, and then clearing it, the cost will still be cheaper than producing it locally. Can you believe that? But things have changed a, a great deal, um, partly because the local printers have upped their games, and also, perhaps more importantly, because of the fall of the Naira. So, but the positive side to that is it's, the situation is helping us to see that our local printers can really produce very good quality. This was produced, published you know, in Nigeria, and you can see it's really, really good stuff. We had back good stuff. But the book itself, you know, is loaded. Um, and it is not just a book, it is a journal. Let me read how to, a, a section of the um, how to use part of this book. Um, the author writes that the book is designed to help individuals unlock and transform their minds. It serves a dual purpose as a book and as a transformational journal. Now, it is divided into three parts with 20 sections. Each section has five relevant nuggets and explanatory notes, instructions to and instructions to guide the reader. And there is a guided reflection space at the end of every section. So you can write, you can take notes. It's more like a practical journal than, a, than, than just a book that you read through. So let's get to meet Taufik Babayeju and then enjoy the conversation I had with him via Skype. Taufik, thank you for joining us on Channels Book Club. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. It's both an honor and a privilege to be here with you too. Great to have you here. Um, Unlock, I like the title. Short, punchy, gets you thinking. The secret to a winning life. What's the story behind this book? And how did you arrive at that topic, that title rather, sorry. Okay, thank you very much, Conley. Uh, Unlock is, is a product of my journey. Um, sometime last year during the COVID, I thought of a, a very uh, good way to make the best out of the lockdown. 
So I, I'd always wanted to write. I've been writing. I have I have a personal blog. I contribute to uh, to some newspapers. So, but it was 20 years of my professional career, and I thought to put together some um, some business lessons that I've learned, both as an as an employee as an, and and then an entrepreneur. While I was writing that book, I also thought about putting together a collection of my thoughts, um, the nuggets, and uh, my my transformational um, you know journey. That was so. I had two manuscripts of two books. You know, going on at the same time. So when I finished the first one, we got on the second uh, book. But while writing the second book, which is Unlock, I realized that there was something that the universe was trying to, you know, to bring forth through me. And I created that model of, you know, the winning life model. Uh, as a matter of fact, the title was initially Unlock Something Inside of You. But when that model came, and it, it struck me that, hey, everybody always wants to win in life, irrespective of what your career goal is, your personal goal is. So what is the model for winning? And that is how that um, the winning life, uh, the secrets to a winning life came as you know, the subtitle. But how did I come about on lock? Um, the point of my career, when I, when I was in telecoms, I owned a, a service center after working with Sony everything for a while. And I realized that phones that were brought from outside Nigeria were particularly locked to, a part, uh, to some foreign networks, whether 3G, um, other, other mo uh, mobile networks outside Nigeria. And for it to receive signal in Nigeria, it needs to go through a process of unlock. And that moment when you unlock a phone, it start taking signal from receiving signal from every other network. So also for individuals, we've been locked to a particular way of thinking, perspective, or mindsets has governed our lives. And for us to think outside that box, think differently to achieve different results or maximize our potential, we need to unlock. Wow, interesting. Now, uh, um, COVID has done so much damage to the world, you know, but I think one positive side to COVID uh, is a lot of unfinished books <laughs> were finished during, during COVID and new ones were conceived and written. So um, that's a good thing. I mean, COVID, COVID, in a way, got you to produce this um, at the time you did. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Well done. Um, now... Let's get into the core of this book because what is the core of your book is very, I find it very powerful, you know, and as a reader, my summary will be that to succeed in life, you've got to start from the inside. It's inside out not outside in, like a lot of us are trying to do. Let me read a part of your book that perhaps um, summarizes it well. Um, for winning in life, your first and primary task is to heed Socrates', Socrates advice. Know thyself. Everything about success, winning, and greatness starts with a thorough knowledge of self and the different dynamics that must brilliantly interplay from your core to concoct and produce the life you desire. Am I spot on? Am I right? Does that sum Absolutely. up this book? Absolutely. Tell me a bit about that. So, okay, thank you very much. Um, so what I've found out um, in life, I most usually let's talk uh, in the light of when January and people are trying to, um, to, to set their New Year targets, their goals and all that, we live life on the surface. But beyond the surface where most of us um, are, our, we're trying to, to be, you know, life is, is lived from within. We have to start from inside. We have to Definitely. understand who we are first. 
if you don't understand who you are, then you cannot be who you are, if I may put it that way. And if you are not who you are, you are somebody else, you are struggling, you, are, you, you will not be as impactful as you ought to be. So understanding who we are, understanding um, our purpose in life, understanding um, our direction, where we ought to be heading, those are the things you describe as the activities, the inside activities that ought to precede the external movements. Is, is that correct? Did I s Fantastic. explain that properly? Absolutely. Because when the purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable, like Monroe said. So we need to understand the purpose. And one other thing that I did in this book uh, my, my, my background is, you know, technology and, you know, project management and um, a lot of consulting, you know, solving clients' problems, solving individual problems. I realized that, you know, life itself, okay, it's a project, okay, and what are the elements of a project? It has a scope, which means, you know, your activities on the face of the earth or, you know, you're here for a purpose, okay, so there's a scope. There's a timeline. You're here for a particular point in time, for, a, um, for a, a time frame. You can't live forever. And you have limited resources. Nobody has had it all, OK? Then you are unique in your own way. That means every project is unique. Of course, you have other project stakeholders. But you are the project manager of your life. You have a project sponsor, which is the divinity, who determines when to terminate your project and when this project, you know, where it ends and supply you with, you know, the necessary support that you need. Once you look at life that way, you now realize that you need to start being deliberate about life. But for you to be deliberate about life, you must know the business case of this life in the first place. What is this life here to achieve? And that is what you need to figure out. So we need to be deliberate about life. Somebody might say, how do you respond to somebody who says, oh, these things are just theories and, you know, life is not like that. So, you know, mapping, you know, drawing a diagram, mapping out all these things. I mean, life is not like that. You just live life and do what you, you, do what you need to do and move on. How do you respond to that? Somebody who thinks this is all very theoretical and academic. Okay. Um, we, there are two... There are two two type of, you know, um, people in life, people that, or that even call it three people, uh, three types of people, people that don't know what is going on, uh, people that understand what is going on, but they don't do nothing. And there are other people that create, you know, the um, something for other people to follow. Okay. Um, and I call this the mango tree analysis. Okay. Whether we like it or not, if the mango gets right it's going to fall from the tree most of us are in that stage where we stay under the mango tree hoping that the mango drops when it's ripe but some people are very deliberate about life and these are the people that are ruling our um you know are taking decision on, on behalf of everybody and taking decision for their own lives they take a bucket or two buckets depending on whatever they want to you know get out of the mango tree Take it along. Have somebody sit at the at the sorry at the at the bottom of sorry at the base of the mango tree. They go up there. They plant. They they they. they, they what's it called? They plant as much mango that they want. You know. You know. And they gather all these things. Whether ripe or not, right? they find a way of ripening it eventually. Anyway, the guy that you know that giving life consciousness would wait for the mango to you know to fall but some people are very deliberate about life so maybe five percent less than five percent of the whole population think that way you know of being deliberate about life why some of the people will just wait for the mango to fall and whether we like it or not mango is going to fall okay for manna to come from heaven we can pray we can hope but trust me hope and prayer they are not strategies Okay, but if you really want to achieve 
you know, the best out of your life. Like some people say the best way to predict the future is to create it. So if you are in that category of people that just want to live life as it comes, of course, welcome to the club. There are, there are, there are billions of people that are living that way. But if you actually want to be a champion and you want to win in life, irrespective of what winning is to you, you need to think differently. And it is about the choices that we make and how we are able. It's not that everything is going to go according to your plan, but you can see what worked and what, what has not worked. And that is how life is. You keep learning. It's you are, you are, you are, you are limited to what you want to do. For example, take, uh, take what happened. COVID happened to all of us, right? It's the same COVID that's happened to, uh, to the prepared organizations, like to the prepared organizations like Zoom, to other people that have created infrastructures. They took advantage of it because they've been deliberate about what they want to achieve out of you know, the business environment of the world itself. While all of us, when happened, some people ended their lives or you know, used it as an example. But every other thing you want to achieve in life is on the other side of fear or excuses. Taufik, you have, thank you, you have very mind. much. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we don't have so much time. I would have wanted to explore um, some other um, topics or issues that you raised in this um, brilliant book. Thanks for joining us on Channels Book Club. Thank you very much for having me. It's, um, it's a privilege, uh, and I do not take this for granted. Uh, I thank you for everything, the good work that you've been doing. I've been following you for years, and thank you for what you do for, um, for the reading community and the world at large. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. You agree with Taufik there that we can all change our lives. We just need to focus you know, on it, be determined and be committed to it. And we can all change our lives. No matter where you are right now, you've got an opportunity. As long as you are breathing, you are alive, there is a chance to start. Like I always say to my friends and to people, every day is an opportunity to start again. Now, last week, we announced this book titled Jack Condé. His story is history by Tunde Fanemokun. Lovely book. Uh, we recently, the country lost a gem, Chief Latif, Alaji Latif Jakonde, who was the first civilian governor of Lagos State. He passed on. And I'm very particular, I'm very keen, you know, on people, uh, books that tell the stories of Nigerians, whether heroes or, or, or villains. You know, we need to tell our stories. We need to document our stories. So I'm a big fan of people who put in the efforts, you know, to write biographies and autobiographies and memoirs and, you know, historical books and all that. I'm a big fan. So I am a big fan of Chief Tunde Fadne Moko. We introduced him to you last week and we introduced him to you. Now, we announced that we, have, we had 15 copies to give away and then we put up these two questions for you. So congratulations to the 15 winners. Uh, please come around to channels, television, and pick a copy of this lovely book titled Jacon Day. Congratulations. This is where we have to end the show today. As always, we'll be delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.